Hello everyone. Today's film is going to be a brand and product focused film. Today's film is also going to be a continuation of the Palest Shade series, which is a series for which that I've produced and shared here on the platform www.youtube.com, where we try out, trial out, and review a particular product from a particular brand. Not only do we examine the credentials of a product, be it a foundation or a concealer, for its formula, we also determine whether or not the product is applicable for the very fairest of skin tones, like my own. In today's film, we are going to be examining two products from Estee Lauder. Estee Lauder was of course created by Estee Lauder and her husband, Joseph Lauder. Neither Estee Lauder or Joseph Lauder are alive today, but they began building Estee Lauder companies in the 20th century, which grew to become incredibly successful. And of course, Estee Lauder companies owns many, many of the cosmetic brands that we know and love today. Estee Lauder has always been a company that I have thought produced high quality, reliable products. And the products that I'm reviewing today haven't necessarily been recently released, though the shade I will be reviewing, I believe is only at least one to two years old. In today's film, I will be reviewing the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place Makeup in the shade 0N1 Alabaster. I shall also be reviewing a lipstick by Estee Lauder, the Estee Lauder Pure Color Envy Lipstick in the shade 440 Irresistible. It's just like me. I've always found with Double Wear as a foundation, it does exactly what it says on the tin. For me personally and professionally, I've found it to be one of the best foundations on the market. It isn't necessarily best for everything, but I find it to be very fail-proof. It stays in place. It's great if you're going out at night or if you're going to be in a humid environment. It covers skin fantastically. They also do a lighter version, the Double Wear Light, and they do the Double Wear Maximum Cover. But today I'm going to be reviewing what is considered the original. In the past, I've produced a film where I showed you how to create a very flawless, extreme coverage foundation, and I actually used the Double Wear Foundation but the shade range was never particularly light. It tended to be slightly darker. For years, I was using Double Wear 1C1 Shell, and I had to use a lightening agent with it. Typically, I would use the Elamasca Skin Base in the shade 01. The Skin Base slightly compromised the formula of the Double Wear ever so slightly, but not completely. The Estee Lauder Double Wear shade range, of course, has expanded over the last few years, which is wonderful because it's a wonderful foundation. It's grown lighter and it's grown darker. And when I scanned the www.estelauder.co.uk website, last night, I believe that there are now 61 shades in the range. Now, I was aware that Estee Lauder brought out a lighter shade called 1N0 Porcelain a couple of years ago. However, I was completely unaware that they had brought out a shade called 0N1 Alabaster, which is substantially lighter. It was actually followers of mine from the platform www.twitter.com who very kindly notified me. I thought it was very strange that no one had sent a telegram to let me know. Then I remembered it's 2019 and not 19. When you've been alive as long as I have, you get the centuries all muddled up. Estee Lauder is a company that I've always loved their products. I think they are fantastic. And they've always had quite a luxurious feel to them. They certainly have a luxury price point. So for me, it was quite exciting to create this film for you here today. I will now engage you in a visual representation of the products so that you are able to gain a greater understanding and perception of what the products look like as well as what their packaging looks like. The Double Wear Foundation comes in this beautiful non-reflective gloss finished cardboard box decorated in a rich navy blue with all branding and text finished in a soft gold colour. Indeed a style classic to Estee Lauder. All applicable information is upon the box. Revealing a simple yet elegant smoky glass bottle with rounded edges and a softened bevel at its base. Finished with the Estee Lauder branding. Shade name on the base. A tall golden screw cap. The cap has a dip on its top unscrewing to reveal the product within. Shade 0N1 Alabaster. The double wear pump applicable for the Double Wear Foundation bottle comes in a similar style of box to the Double Wear Foundation. All relevant information has been listed upon the box. Unveiling the pump, removing the protective plastic which also has Estee Lauder branding and has been finished in the classic Estee Lauder navy colour paired together and it has a transparent protective cap on the top to operate twist and turn, unscrewing the golden cap from the double wear bottle, inserting the pump and screwing it tightly into position for use, pressing down on the cap twice to ensure product function.
Adding the cap, the Pure Color Envy lipstick comes in a box similar to the previous products. However, the box has been decorated with a matte Estee Lauder emblem, revealing the Pure Color Envy lipstick. The lipstick bullet is finished in the rich navy color with a golden base and a top. Its shape subtly tapered and broadest in the middle with a high gloss finish. Shade and details are on a sticker on its base, Estee Lauder branding on the top. Opening to discover the cap is magnetized. The inside of the bullet is golden, with further Estee Lauder branding. Twisting to unveil the lipstick, the 440 irresistible color is held in place by a transparent acrylic mold. It is a beautiful rosewood color. Its overall appearance is simple, yet elegant. When I purchased the foundation and the lipstick, I also purchased a facial scrub with it. And I made my purchase earlier on in the year. In fact, these products have been sitting on the altar within my atelier, waiting to be reviewed. Now I purchased these products directly from Estee Lauder's website, www.estelauder.co.uk. For the double wear stay in place makeup foundation in the shade 0N1 Alabaster, I paid approximately 33 pounds and 50 pence. For the Estee Lauder Pure Color Envy, lipstick. In the shade 440 Irresistible, I paid approximately £27. And along with that order, I also purchased the Estee Lauder Perfectly Clean Multi-Action Cleansing Gel Refiner. I won't be going into great depth about this product today. It is simply just an exfoliating cream, but it really lathers up on the skin and it's not too abrasive. I don't really like exfoliators, as I've said before here on my channel, that are overly abrasive. I don't like anything that feels sore or really gritty on the face. I've often found in the past whenever I have used heavily abrasive exfoliators that it feels as if though I have just jumped head first into a quarry. I've already gone in and exfoliated my skin today using the Estee Lauder Perfectly Clean Multi-Action Cleansing Gel Refiner. So my skin is currently bare and just to quickly remove any sebum before I go in with moisturizer I'm going to be taking the Lovecraft Beauty Macala or Micellar Water however you like to pronounce that word and I just go over the skin very lightly always working inwards never working outwards, always going in. And I'm just fanning it just to dry it down. For moisturizer, I'm going to go in with a trusted favorite of mine, the Embryolis La Creme Concentrate. I'm applying quite a liberal amount of that moisturizer as my skin is in due need of replenishment. Now, when I apply moisturizer, I really massage it into the skin and give the skin a good pummel. I've been wearing double wear for years, so I really love the foundation and I understand it quite well. I wouldn't say that it dries matte, it does need a powder, but I certainly wouldn't say that it is a dewy foundation. It does cling to the skin. It's almost like a liquid lipstick or a gel eyeliner. It really stays in place. I'm going to go in with the Estee Lauder Lip Conditioner. I absolutely adore this product as well as its packaging. I'm just going to apply a little bit of that to the lips. I have gone in and attached the pump to my bottle of the Estee Lauder Double Wear in the shade 0N1 for ease of use. Before I go in and apply the foundation, I'm first of all going to go in and apply a color corrector to counterbalance and banish any of the discoloration that is around my eyes and take down a slight bit of the shadow that is in my brow area. And to color correct, I'm taking my go-to product, which is the Cryolan Derma Color Cream Concealer in the shade D1W. And I'm applying it with a Charles Fox 846405 brush. I'm not being neat with that, first of all, I'm just targeting the areas that require it and then I will go in and buff it slightly and then go in with the foundation. And to buff the concealer into place, I'm going to be taking a Zova 227 brush. Just very quickly blur everything out. With the color corrector now applied in the targeted areas, I'm now going to go in and apply the double wear foundation. To apply it, I shall be using a Tina Earnshaw brush. I'm just going to apply a good bit of it first of all. It's considerably lighter than I expected. I'm slightly uh, happy about that, however, we will have to see if it oxidizes. Now, if this foundation is a match and it doesn't oxidize on my skin, I will never have to mix a foundation ever again. Now, I'm not really applying it in any fashion. I'm just slapping it on and hoping for the best. After all, we don't have all day. YOLO, as the young people say. I always take a foundation down onto the neck. I think it is a wonderful way of achieving a very seamless gradient because then you can go in and buff and blend and sort all of the neck out. By matching your foundation to the color on your neck and your decolletage, it makes your head look like it is part of your body. I often think that if you apply a foundation that is a different color, to the rest of your body, to your face, it does tend to make the head look a little bit stuck on. And I'm just going to go back in and apply a little bit more foundation in the areas that require. I tend to use a flat foundation brush, almost like a shovel. We're just loading the face on, first of all, with 
the product. Now I'm taking a tiny amount of the foundation on a Furless CB2 brush and I'm just stippling the skin first of all. What this technique does, it retexturizes the foundation. And the great thing about a buffing brush is that you can buff and then it will disrupt the formation of the foundation a little bit, but it will shear it down so it starts to blend into the skin. And then once you've buffed, you then just stipple and that creates a really seamless gradient. Also by stippling, stippling around a hairline also gives you a perfect gradient. By applying a lip balm to the lips before going in with foundation, it makes the lips much more impervious to a foundation so that the foundation is easier to remove off the lips once you've applied it there and less of it sticks to the lips. Another technique that I have for disguising the appearance of pores on the nose is if you buff, this pushes foundation everywhere and then you stipple it, and that just corrects the texture. So that is the first layer of the double wear foundation in the shade 0N1 Alabaster applied. So far, it is looking quite good. It is matching my neck. The color doesn't differentiate that much. However, we shall have to see whether or not it oxidizes. Of course, the foundation will darken once I have powdered it down. Now I'm going to go in and apply an additional layer of the foundation just to correct and brighten up areas that I feel require a little bit more coverage. With the second coat of foundation now applied, it's oxidizing just ever so slightly. I haven't seen a major change in it and it is starting to dry ever so slightly. However, I wouldn't say that it has gone matte. This foundation certainly doesn't go matte, unless of course your skin is quite dry. I've often found that double wear requires a little bit of powder. Now to brighten the underneath of the eyes, which are looking quite dark, I shall be going in with the Cryolan Diamacolor Cream Concealer in the shade D707. And I'm just using the same e.l.f. concealer brush from before and stippling that on on top. I'm going to go in and set just the under eyes, first of all, just a tiny little bit, using some of the very recently released Anastasia Beverly Hills Loose Setting Powder. This is a very fine powder, and I'm usually a little bit hesitant to use these at all on myself. Wonderful in my kit, but on myself I tend to go for a more fatty powder. And I'm just taking the faintest amount of that and setting the under eyes, first of all. With the concealer now adjusted, I'm going to be going in with some of Inglot's Mattifying Loose Powder just to set everything through. And I'm just pressing that on using a Real Techniques blusher brush. Haven't used this brush since 90 note cake. I'm now going to go in and complete the rest of the look by first of all applying eyebrows to stencil out a shape for the eyebrows. I'm going to be taking some of MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadow in the shade Omega first of all. And I shall be going in with that first of all with an Anastasia 14 brush. With the shape of the eyebrows now created, I'm now going to go in and apply some of MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadow in the shade Concrete and draw in individual tiny little hairs and feather them on top of the stencil that we have applied. And to do so, I am taking an Anastasia Beverly Hills number 12 brush. It's a nice stabby brush. And just do little hairs, pulling them up that way and then some going that way and pulling it upwards so that you create a real gradient. With the eyebrows now complete, I am now going to move on to eyes. But before I do so, I'm now going to go in with our Lovecraft Beauty Makella or Micellar Water, and I'm just going to apply a little bit of it to a cotton pad and remove the foundation that is on the lips. And I've just folded this circular cotton pad up into a quarter so that I provide myself with greater precision when removing the foundation on the lips. And then taking the same product on a cotton bud or a Q-tip, I know that they are called different names in different regions, and I'm just rolling and pressing that into the lips. Now the reason that I do this is so that we can go back in with our Estee Lauder lip balm from before and apply a good bit of it to the lips. And this just conditions the lips in preparation for lipstick. It also ensures that you are able to get a really seamless application of the lipstick when you go in with the lipstick festival because the lips will be smooth and they will have the conditioner on them which allows the lipstick to disperse and glide across the lips and it just makes the lips feel less dead as when you've gone in with a lot of foundation and powder it can sometimes make the lips feel quite hard and a little brittle. So it just restores a little bit of bounce and life back into the lips. Now moving on to eyes. I do not wish to go in with something that is very defined or dramatic. I just want to do something that really enhances my own eyes and just gives them a subtle polish with a good bit of definition. I'm going to be going into my Louise Young Cosmetics palette and I shall be taking this shade right here, which is very pale, and it is the shade Ting. And I'm just applying that to the eye as a base, first of all, packing it on as it's quite close to my natural skin color. So what I'm doing is just counteracting any 
discoloration in the eyelids with this and because it is so close to my own natural skin color I can really buff it up and out and this just acts like a base for the shadows that you apply next this sort of trick works on every skin tone it almost works like a pre-transitional color for your transition color that you may plan to go in with and sometimes if we apply foundation around here we end up with a slight bit of skin still showing or a slight bit of our own natural skin color showing so by going over it with a color that is similar to your foundation and your own natural skin tone, it just blends everything together quite seamlessly. And then apply a little bit of that tin color to the underneath of the eye, connecting it round to the socket, applying it with a backstage precision pencil brush. Now it may seem as if applying this color to the underneath of the eye does absolutely nothing. However, what it actually does is provide us a base for the next shadow that we go in with so that the application is absolutely seamless. Then taking a MAC 217 and just brushing over everything very lightly just to ensure seamlessness. Now I'm going to be taking some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Omega and I'm going to be applying that mainly to the outer corner of the eyelid and taking it into the socket just ever so slightly but mainly at the outer corner and on the eyelid rather than into the socket as I just want to give the eye really subtle and graceful definition and I'm just patting it on and then just buffing it along the upper eyelashes and then just going back in with our Kitstar's blender brush and just buffing everything and because we have gone in with our base color by going in with our transition color it now just blends effortlessly and I'm just winging the Omega color just up and out ever so slightly into the temple but I'm not doing too much of a wing that way I want to keep it quite straighten up. I just want it to be the slightest bit of definition so that we elongate and pull the eyes upward very very subtly. And with the same Omega color I'm now going to take a Kitstar's N33 micro pencil brush and as you can see I'm just going underneath with that smoking it through the lower lashes but mainly concentrating most of the color at the outer part of the eye because if I take too much color into the inner part of the eye, the eye starts to tilt up the way. Whereas if we keep the majority of the depth at the outer part of the eye, it pushes the eyes upward. And one little trick you can do is pull the brush round and almost trace it round into your socket. This just connects everything together. And if it looks a little bit crude, you just go back in with your blender brush and soften everything. Now I shall be going in with some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Espresso and I'm just going to press a little bit of it into the lash line using an Anastasia Beverly Hills A1 brush mainly on the upper lash line and a tiny little bit of it on the underneath just to provide us with subtle definition. Now I'm going to go in with mascara but first of all I'm going to take some MAC Cosmetics Eyelash Curlers and give the eyelashes a good thorough curl. For mascara, I'm going to be taking yet another Estee Lauder product. This is the Estee Lauder Zero Smudge Lengthening Mascara and it is in the shade Black. And I'm just going to apply a liberal amount of that. And now I'm going to take my MAC Cosmetics 205 brush and apply the mascara to the lower lash line. I much prefer to apply mascara with a brush because when you go in with a wand to the lower lashes, I find that it coats the underneath of the lower lashes, which then transfers, it always transfers on my eyes, to around the skin here and I end up looking a little haggard. So it's best to apply the mascara just on top of the lower lashes and that's what I like to do using a brush. Mainly applying most of the mascara to the outer part of the lower lashes and applying most of the product at the root and sort of feathering it out along the eyelashes. With the eyes complete I would now like to move on to cheeks. For contour I'm going to go back in with some of our Omega colour from before and I'm just stippling that onto the cheekbone using an Inglot 38 SS brush. I'm just creating this subtle definition first of all. I always think that the best contours look seamless. It's always a good idea to apply product sort of everywhere around the cheek, just a thin layer of it, and then concentrate the product in the area that you want to sculpt the most. That way you ensure seamlessness and you create a really natural looking gradient, but you can also make it quite severe and quite strong without it looking too garish by using this technique. And as you can see, that gives us definition without being overly severe. And the other side, and I always think that by taking a little bit of your contour color into your blush area as a slight hue, then going in with your blush over the top, it just makes everything look so soft and seamless and flawless. And I think that there is nothing more impressive in makeup where you cannot see where it starts and stops. I think that is 
great makeup application. And I've been a little bit abrasive with my application of the contour just to see whether or not the double wear can withstand it, even though I know that it can, but we're going to give it a trial run today. Now for blusher, I'm going to be taking some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Blush in the shade Blush Baby. And I'm just applying a very subtle amount of that on a NARS number no. 6 brush. I'm applying it quite high, as I always think that makes people look quite healthy. I always think with blusher, it's always a good idea to apply it where you want the blush to appear, rather than smiling to apply blusher, as that puts blush far too low in the face, I find. I'm just going to go back in and apply a slight subtle bit of the contour through the temples, which will lift the eyes ever so slightly. Now for highlighter, I'm going to go in with an old faithful, and I shall be going in with the Makeup Academy Undress Your Skin Powder Highlighter. And I am applying it on the same NARS number no. 6 brush. I'm just applying quite a good bit of it a tiny bit of it to the bridge of the nose, faintest amount to the chin, and the teeniest bit to the forehead, just to add a little bit of life to those places. I'm going to go further in with highlighter, and I'm going to apply some of the Anastasia Beverly Hills loose highlighter in the shade Snowflake. And I'm just applying a slight bit of that to the high points of the cheekbones, and a tiny bit onto the cheek, just to give us additional glow. And the other side. Now moving on to lips, which is exciting, because we can now go in with our lipstick. I'm going to be going in with our Estee Lauder Pure Colour Envy lipstick, in the shade 440 Irresistible. And I'm just applying it from the bullet first of all. This is my first time trying out this formula. It is an incredibly creamy formula so far, and it appears a lot darker on my lips than I was expecting. Now I've applied that to the lips just quite roughly, just to get the color on, just so I can determine what it's like, and also to determine what sort of lip liner to go in with. Now this color looks very dark on me, but if your skin is a little bit darker than mine, or very dark, this color will look really light on you. It's not all that dissimilar to my own natural lip color. It's certainly a lot colder. It definitely has a blueness in it, but it is incredibly creamy. It's almost like a lip gloss without being sticky. It has a really emollient texture. Now I'm going to go in and line the lips. The closest colour I could find was MAC Cosmetics Lip Liner in the shade Half Red. Now I'm going to go in and correct any of the asymmetry within the lips and of course overdraw the lips, just to create the illusion of far more fuller lips. So that more or less completes the look, as well as today's brand and product focus film. Trying out, trialling out and reviewing Estee Lauder's Double Wear Stay In Place Foundation in the shade 0N1 Alabaster, as well as trying out the Estee Lauder Pure Colour Envy lipstick in the shade 440 Irresistible. It was to my surprise, actually, that this foundation, the 0N1 Alabaster, matches my skin tone. As you can see, it has oxidized just ever so slightly, but it's not offensive. I can still carry it, I can still pass this off, it's still very much my shade. And I think I have probably found a new go-to foundation, because I have always loved double wear. This was not my first time using the double wear foundation, however, it was my first time wearing the double wear in the shade 0N1 Alabaster. This is the Double Wear Maximum Cover, which is also a fantastic foundation. Shade range isn't as varying, but it's almost like the regular Double Wear, but on steroids. It's so high coverage, and it really stays in place. However, the only downside to this foundation, the Double Wear Maximum Cover, of course the shade range is not that varying, but the Maximum Cover really grabs to the skin. It's designed to do that. On me personally, it emphasizes my fine lines. The first time I ever saw one of my finer lines, I thought I was dying. But I absolutely adore the Maximum Cover. It's fantastic as a concealer. It can also be sheared down with moisturizer. It's just a no-nonsense product. Certainly when I speak to other people about wearing double wear the foundation, they either adore it or they do not. I think it is one of those foundations that really will work for you, or it might not necessarily work for you. It's a fantastic foundation if you need a good bit of coverage and you need a foundation that really stays in place. I am definitely able to confirm that the shade 0N1 Alabaster is applicable for the very fairest of skin tones. I would mark it as being considerably lighter than a MAC Cosmetics NW10. I would definitely peg its shade as being in between the Kat Von D Locker Foundation in the shade Light 41 Neutral and Light 42 Neutral. It's sort of in between them. I just think the packaging looks really luxurious. I would say that for all the Estee Lauder packaging, I've always loved Estee Lauder. This, of course, is the darkest shade, 1N0 Porcelain, and this is the 0N1 Alabaster. You will be able to see that the porcelain is substantially darker, and of course, that's what the regular packaging looks like, and this is it with the pump. Double Wear does tend to be the foundation that I do wear. Of course, I was using a darker shade in the past and mixing it with a white to bring it up to my skin tone, but now, I think with the 0N1 Alabaster shade, I might be able to just wear it on its own, which will make things a lot more easier. 
please, yeah, of course. There's still a lot of pure color envy lipstick in the shade 440 Irresistible. Actually applied a lot darker than I expected. Reddish tones aren't necessarily what I go for. I do tend to go for more nudes as I do tend to find that reds or darker lipsticks make my chin look a little bit like a pickaxe, like something you would use to mine for diamonds. However, I do really like this color 440 Irresistible and I think I would wear it more as a stain on the lips just to brighten up my own natural lip color because this color is not that far from my own natural lip color. It's just slightly richer, slightly darker, and a little bit more cooler toned. And that more or less summarizes today's brand and product focus film. I would like to seize this as the opportunity to wish Estee Lauder all the best of luck for the future. I have had a lot of fun creating this film for you here today, and I hope that you have found the tips, the techniques, and the recommendations for which that I have shared within today's film to be either interesting, useful, helpful, or beneficial. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and of course, take care. Bye.